Hello everybody, I'm excited to share my thoughts on this week's discussion. Um, starting out with uh, developing handouts and interventions, uh, I think the thing that I found successful in my limited experience in developing these and being a part of them is making it goal specific. Um, and by that I mean if the group of older adults um, looking at the condition, I guess is a better way to put it. So if all of them have diabetes, let's focus on diabetes education. Um, so maybe we educate them on carbohydrates, um, the consistent carbohydrate diet. Um, that's actually what we did in my previous clinical site um, when we had one-on-one -on -one interventions with patients. Um, we always focus on handouts that were condition specific. Ways to measure goals. Um, I think that the uh, malnutrition screening tool, the MST, is always a good one to use um, just to see if they're at risk for that. Um, as many older adults do not get the proper nutrition and that's an important tool to use. Um, I think uh, it's important to focus on BMI and body composition as well. Um, not to say that a slightly higher BMI um, is cause for concern, but um, a BMI of 60 or 70 um, definitely is, um, and we cannot look past that. Um, to have conversations about weight, um, I definitely have in the past, and, and I think when they, you know, you come into the room and you're like, hey, I'm a, you know, dietetic student, or my preceptor is the registered dietitian, they immediately kind of clam up and they're like, well, I've been eating my vegetables or this or that, and, and they'll talk about their weight, and I'm not happy with this. And um, what I found with my preceptor, and when I talk to patients about this, I try not to focus on the weight. I try to focus on, well, how has your eating habits been? What can we do to help you um, from a nutrition perspective and, and not focusing on weight as much? Because I don't think that's beneficial, and I'm sure that their physician and other medical professionals have told them to already lose weight. So I don't think that's beneficial to keep um, hammering that down. Um, and then questions about weight stigma. Um, I think some, some good ones, uh, like I discussed about the eating habits. Um, what kind of foods and beverages do you eat and drink on a typical day? What does healthy eating look like for you? And do you eat only when you're hungry or do you eat for other reasons as well, such as feeling stressed or bored? I think getting to the root cause of their eating habits is very important um, and that will help build a base around their um, perspective and stigma towards diet and nutrition. Thank you.